accelerating thrust WSH to its target speed of over 400 miles per hour will take a huge amount of power. Fortunately, for the past 25 years, a pair of military jet engines have been in storage, waiting to show what they can do. Originally retained as spares for the supersonic land speed record car thrust SSC, these engines are rare, high-spec versions of the Rolls-Royce Spey units that powered Phantom jet fighters during the Cold War. Back in the days of thrust SSC, the car's jet engines were tested on a huge military test stand in Shoebury Ness, but also at Derra's engine test facility at Pystock. So to see how the engines for thrust WSH had withstood years of storage, surely all the team would need to do is head back to the test stands, fuel up and get them started. Unfortunately not. There aren't many Phantoms flying these days, and although the Spey engine is still used in other applications, both the Shubri Ness rig and the Derra facility are long gone. Commercial engine test cells are expensive, booked months in advance and unlikely to want to risk running Cold War engines fresh out of storage in case it damages their rig. The engines would also need electrical connectors and ancillary equipment peculiar to the Rolls-Royce Spey. All of this left the thrust team with just one option. They would need to design and build their own test rig. Now this is no simple task. The Spey 205 produces 25,000 pounds at full power. That's over 11,000 kilograms or more than 11 tonnes of thrust that needs to be tamed. Any failure of the stand or its ground anchors could see the engine under test leave the scene very rapidly. James Morton, a veteran of the Thrust SSC project, took on the task of designing the test stand with input from the WSH engine team. David Wedge took charge of sourcing steel and oversaw the build with all of the welds checked and signed off by a specialist with military experience. A heavyweight piece of engineering, once built the frame was stress tested by mechanical engineer Andrew Bradley and made ready to be fixed to its concrete base. Meanwhile the search for ancillary engine parts went on. A military spec fuel tank was sourced but the pumps needed for inside the tank were missing and proved hard to find. Pumps from an RAF tornado were sourced, but they needed to be rebuilt by specialists Eaton pumps before use. Engine mounts also proved hard to find, so the team borrowed one, measured it, and machined their own. An engine control box was designed and built, but the most difficult parts to find proved to be the electrical connectors. Not even specialist parts suppliers carried any stock. The team even got permission from the RAF to see whether one of their Gate Guardian aircraft, which were decommissioned many years ago and placed on display, had the necessary parts. But after days' exploration behind the panels of the aircraft, it was clear that all of the wiring looms and connectors had been cut and binned as part of the Arms Limitation Treaty. However, piece by piece, parts were found. In the southwest of England is Cornwall Airport, Newquay which was the site of engine tests for Bloodhound SSC. There, the team were offered use of a hardened aircraft shelter, or HAZ, for the engine test. The HAZ was ideal, as it was already plumbed for fuel and power and would contain any debris should the engine self-destruct. Ground-penetrating radar was used to check the concrete floor of the HAZ before it was drilled and chemical anchors from specialists Hilti were used to secure the new test stand to the ground. With the frame installed in the HAZ, an airport crash truck helped with a pull test to place the test rig under a load of 18 tonnes. With the first engine fitted and fuelled, it was finally time to start the test. Fuel port open. After 25 years of silence, were the Spey 205s ready to roar again? Stay tuned, the answer to that question may surprise you. <laughs> 